Well, uh, Ron, this of course, uh, this moment is sending a chill up my spine because uh, we're here at View Road Springvale where I grew up. And uh, you'll notice that they've got the crack house bars on the outside of it now. But um, in fact, uh, it was a very lovely place and uh, it was the, the place where we wrote our first song. Mm. Um, I can't think of any other real significance other than um, just, uh, you know, the whole kind of cinema verite aspect of this DVD. Hopefully, we'll, you know, we'll get played at Cannes. Uh, we could get played at Cannes. Uh, not Cannes in France. More Cannes the Tigers. Yes. Uh, what Dublin, I think, was to Joyce. What the Mississippi was to Twain. What Glen Archer's toilet was to Wayne Carey. I think... This is statism. Uh, the debating. Pig on a spit. The couple's kissing on stage. <laughs> well, this of course is the Sandown Park Greyhound uh, track, uh, where I worked for nine years, and my specific role uh, at this place was to pick up the dog shit. Um, with a, a very, very ergonomically designed shovel. And I think that's a very, very, uh, you know, that's a poignant image which runs through most of our work. You know, Tism is the ergonomically designed shovel collecting right. the dog shit of rock. That's right. I mean, I think racing is the sport of kings. And we're talking Jet, of course, would be a racehorse. Oh, don't absolutely, you feel? yes, yes. You know, yes. and then we have the, the great ennobling team sports like cricket and football, and we have equivalent bands there. I think Powder Finger would be more your cricket team with mm, their. Uh, mm. um, creams, they'd be wearing creams. They would I be think, wearing yes. creams, yeah. you know. And of course, there are great bands that encapsulate the male bonding of football. We've got Hunters and Collectors and mm, the whole mm. post punk. Mm. We have those little boys with Bronsky spiky beat. hair. That sort of thing. Humphrey, Will on the Wrecker um, is a completely fictional character. Yes. And uh, we're about to uh, have an interview with Whelan, mm. who, in his fictitious way, appeared with us during our very early phase, I remember. Yes, during the seminal um, early period of our uh, reunion tour, um, and you may in fact notice uh, Whelan on the Wrecker's presence in some of the archival footage, um, a, a fleeting presence... Um, involved in the art of blowing up balloons and handing them to the audience, um, giving out fairy floss and so forth, uh, but entirely fictitious. A cipher. Um, a zephyr. <coughs> um, well, the audience was um, at Tis and Gigs very early on. In fact, um, the people that revolted them was unfortunately the core of their audience, um, which became a bit of a problem because... They wanted names on doors, <laughs> everything, as you can imagine, because they had the hair, clothes, purple hair, green hair. But the saving grace in that, as soon as uh, most of those arty, pretentious uh, rock types, um, names on door types, once they got wind of actually what Tism were doing, uh, they couldn't get out in the car park quick enough to uh, get in their uh, Volvos and scoot off back to uh, Brunswick and stuff. So that left the door wide open for all the knobs from Frankston, Glen Waverley, um, Springvale, which was good because they didn't care what they paid. They bought the merchandise, beat up each other in the car park. They basically they were for, good, for a good time. It was like a um, suburb comes to the city type affair. It was, um, it was great for the band. And they've been living off it ever since. Motor uh, The fake opera audience. Fake telephone. Tism have held up a mirror to the to the Australian music industry, and I think it's been good for the for music in this country. They've got a lot of fans. I mean, they've got fans in other sort of poppy alternative bands, or or um. You know, alternative's not really the word anymore to use for these guys because 
they're about as commercial as you get, but like, Friends of Rom, Jebediah, bands like that are, are professed fans of Tism. Grinspoon, I think, are fans of Tism as well. Uh, there are a lot of bands that hate Tism. Um, the guy from Not From There had some really nasty things to say about Tism, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, and obviously, a lot of radio stations hate them, a lot of journalists can't stand them. Um, and it's probably because this is serious mum makes them look like dickheads. Now, uh, roughly about here um, is, uh, was the, uh, the home of a girl called Sandra Smallman. Now, now I say roughly about here um, on Princess Highway, Springvale, because I never actually went to her house. Uh, I bicycled past in abject loneliness a few times and I wasn't exactly sure which one it was. Now, the point, of course, of me referring to this is because Sandra Smallman uh, was the first girl who ever rejected me. And uh, Sandra, if you're out there watching, I'd like to personally thank you because that uh, you know, set a, a course of events in place uh, which led to me standing stupidly here today in this ridiculous costume. Because without rejection, I think I would have had a very happy and successful life. Mm. Um, Sandra, you know, of course, uh, at the time, you know, I nearly managed to plant a kiss on her in the slow dance at the Springvale Youth Club that night, but she pulled back at the last second and said to me, Humphrey, I want you to form an ill-conceived rock band mm. um, combining elements of techno and garage punk, uh, which will ultimately uh, lead you nowhere. Sandra, of course, still lives here. Um, she's yes. 115 stone and she does wash herself with a rag on a stick. Oh. <laughs> Two Tism bands playing at once. Oh, the goat. What we're entering in here is, is the suburban block with the swimming pool. Mm. And I think that signature, the swimming pool, does put a dividing line between the world we've just come out of, the um, the Springvale world with the racing and the greyhounds and the crack whores and we're here up to the swimming pool world, world mm, which has mm. got your chlorine, your alkali testing, um, that's very, your, that's your very nice true. Uh, golden retriever dogs and your crack whores. Yes, although a, a very much more uh, you know polite and diffident crack whore. Well Humphrey it's mediocrity, but it's a better class of mediocrity. If I can just get our cameraman to centre in on the neatly stacked hose there, with its gardenia system all worked out, and the beautifully painted archway, the uh, security alarm. Basically what we're doing here at Wheeler's Hill is guarding ourselves against the very sort of people we were filming down at Springvale. We're no better than them. It's all drug money, it's all cocaine money. But it's carefully disguised cocaine money, and that's what makes the difference, I think, Humphrey. Now, Ron, uh, you know, there is, of course, a legend associated with uh, TISM, and that is the, the tragic legend um, of Jean Rabigood. Mm. Um, mm. Jean Rabigood left TISM due to increasing bouts of sanity. That's the, uh, that is in fact the rock rumour. Mm -hmm. It's rather like the Pink Floyd boy. Yeah, Sid Barrett. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, w we don't really want to speak ill of, uh, of genre be good. We, we would like not to uh, bring shame to his family, but let it just be said that there came a point when we realised that um, he was actually smart mm. and um, longed for a life of happiness. Mm. Contentment. Yeah. Family, kitchens. The whole suburban nightmare. The genre, um, your nakedness was a big part of your art. Um, we're wondering if you could explain your views about nakedness and uh, its relationship to the Tism corpus. Yeah, well, Ron, it's uh, got to remember that uh, we're all nude under our clothes. 20 guitarists playing one note. <laughs> the guys hitting golf balls into the crowd. The problem about Fiscarello, though, the whole thing was director's cut. Mm. There was no other, there was no proper cut. There was mm. no audience cut. What's mm. wrong with an audience cut these days? That's what we need. What about this? This is a whole new radical, uh, radical introduction to French cinema. A bit for the audience, not for the director. Has anyone heard of that?
Why can they make a DVD where the edges aren't sharp so it doesn't hurt when you're wiping your ass? The tricycles. <laughs> the white goods instead of amps. The washing line's full of washing. <laughs> the fake encores. The rubbish bins. <laughs> the on-stage auction. The guy's playing cards.